Let's take a look at the code in this LabVIEW project. I'm going to begin by reviewing the overall structure of RTMain. RTMain uses a flat sequence structure to do the initialization phase, which sets the functional global variable for all stop to false, the run phase, which executes these two sub-VIs, and then also runs this uh, loop, this idle loop that basically just pulls the stop button, and it does so at a rate of 10 hertz, once every 100 milliseconds, and when the stop button goes active, it writes a true to the all stop functional global variable. Let's look at the first sub-VI process loop number one is the fast counter, and it updates the functional global variable as well as its front panel indicator. Normally on each loop iteration, this counter increments. However, if the global variable for reset is true, then it resets the value to zero. The all stop variable is read to determine when to stop this process loop. Process loop number two is the slow counter. And in this case, it increments whenever the value read from the fast counter is equal to 10. Otherwise, slow counter maintains its present value. This condition of equaling 10 that causes the counter to increment is also written to the global variable for the reset. And the process loop stops when the all stop global variable is true. Now for the remainder of this video, we're going to look at creating functional global variables and try to get a better feel for what they're all about. In the Project Explorer, I have three functional global variables set up. Each one of these is its own VI. Let's look inside the fast counter. We see an operation which is either read or write. We have the data to write when you're doing a write operation or the data to read if you're doing a read operation. The sub-VI uses the standard error behavior based on wrapping the whole thing in a case structure. We look at the incoming error cluster and if there's no error, we execute this code. However, if there is an error incoming, then we do nothing and pass the error straight through. Now for the regular code, we see a while loop that contains a shift register. And one essence of a functional global variable is that the shift register, this memory element, is uninitialized. And that means that the value will persist as long as the sub-VI remains in memory. It's easy to create a shift register on a while loop. I'll show you, show you that just in case you haven't done that before. The other key attribute of a functional global variable is that the while loop runs exactly one time. So the while loop is not iterating, but rather is there simply to hold the shift register. The enumerated control selects the appropriate subdiagram of the case structure, either write or read. When we're doing a write operation, the write data available from the front panel control is applied to the shift register and is also applied to the read data. When we do a read operation, we read the present value contained in the shift register and just pass that along to be uh, applied to the shift register again, and then also read that out. I'll show you how to create one of these enumerated controls. I'll find it right there. Then I'm going to right click and choose edit items. Let's go with what we already have, read and write. You can uh, rearrange these as needed. And that's how you create that control. You can use the same technique to edit the existing control. In this case, I'm going to add a third function called square. Functional global variables, the, the word function re refers to the possibility of, of performing operations on the data instead of just uh, storing data. So I've added a corresponding case for square. Let's go ahead and insert that squaring element right there. And so this functional global variable has been upgraded to perform an extra operation on the data. 
Finally, it's important to make sure you're using the proper execution mode. And that execution mode is non-reentrant execution. It's critical that you select this mode for a functional global variable.